that's why they say the best thing you can add to your system is spending money on an antenna. Welcome to Ham Radio TV. I'm Jason, KM6FAK, the guy that's running the camera and getting these up on YouTube for you to enjoy. This is a real basic introduction to Smith charts. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because people will fall asleep on me. I know because I've done that before. So we're going to kind of talk about basics. Um, so a Smith chart is circular, obviously. It has a lot of interlaced lines and circles and stuff like that. It's basically a polar plot of complex reflection coefficient. I'll get into that in a minute. It's not as bad as it sounds. Um, it was it was named after Philip Smith Jr. and I had Philip Smith. It was originally described in 1939 in Electronics magazine, oh, and it's basically a tool for calculating impedance and SWR, standing wave ratio values, along transmission lines and matching networks, <coughs> not antennas. This is basically um, how, it, how the radio looks, what the radio sees on the end of the cable you plug, <coughs> plug into the transmitter. That's what this chart is all about. So basically, if we think of a speedometer and a thermometer, um, you know, they're kind of stylized pictures. Uh, they're marked in miles per hour and, and kilometers per hour. A uh, thermometer is in Fahrenheit and Celsius. They're not very accurate, but they're kind of rounded to the value. You don't have those, all of the values. You can have 104, 140, 176 degrees, and you have the equivalent uh, Celsius on the other side. So if you think about an SWR meter, um, you know, it starts down at 1.1 1 .1 to 1 ratio. This SWR is a ratio of the amount of signal that's returning back to the transmitter, reflected signal, and it goes up to infinity. On the left side, we have a value called rho. Rho is a, it's the magnitude of a reflected coefficient. So it's basically saying that's the amount of energy that's coming back to the radio. That's not being absorbed by the antenna. At some later time we'll go into the fact that it actually is eventually, but initially it's reflected. So the scale may be marked in, in, in SWR, standing wave ratio units, but the real scale is that reflected coefficient. That's, that's really what the SWR is based on. So, while the SWR is only, meter is only concerned with the magnitude of the reflection, the reflected signal, but rho is more complex because it also deals with an angle, and we'll get into that in a minute. So you have both the, magn both the magnitude and the angle of the information coming back. And measuring points along the transmission line, uh, the magnitude would be fairly constant, but the angle of that magnitude would change. So at different positions, we're going to have different angles, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, so now I'm showing both the rho, the reflect, reflected coefficient, and the rho angle. So here's minus 90, plus 90, 0, 180. So they basically took <coughs> calculations every 15 degrees, and it's indicated distance from the center. So center is zero, and we go out to show the value of the row. So we have the value, and we have the angle. <clears throat> That's what I meant by the magnitude and the angle of the, of the amount. So it's, so it's basically measured from the three o'clock position. So it starts at zero, and then goes, actually starts at here, and goes all the way around, back to, back to 180 degrees again. Why, just sure. Quick here. Why do they use minus ninety and say two seventy? Like you would normally think of zero, zero ninety, one eighty. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Because it's. I'll, I'll, hey. When I explain that in a minute, you'll understand why it's like that. So, rho is a complex quantity and it's expressed as a real, and very complicated, an imaginary component. The imaginary component is the angle. 
that we're talking about. So instead of calling it magnitude and angle, we give it a real number, which is the true resistance, and an imaginary number, which is the reactance, the angle that we're talking about. So mathematics solutions sometimes contain square roots of a negative number, which are not real numbers. That, there's where it comes to imaginary numbers. Um, in electronics, they use, a lot of times they use the symbol I for imaginary, but since we have I as current, in electronics we use a J. And we use to distinguish that between resistance and reactance. So uh, complex number algebra allows us to add it and subtract it. And that's why we have the plus and minus 90. Because plus 90 is, um, is uh, inductive reactance, and minus 90 is capacitive reactance. So that's why, because yeah, it it's still 270, but it makes more sense to say plus and minus. So when we talk about reactance, and reactance is basically resistance at a certain frequency. Okay, it's more than just, um, so it has an angle component because it's based on resistance in a capacitor or inductor, a coil or a capacitor. Uh, the vertical axis is called a reactance axis, and it represents the voltage or current associated with the reactants. And here you have 90 and 270 degree direction. So if, the, if, if you plot the impedance of a circuit and find it falls on the horizontal axis, the impedance is equivalent to pure resistance. If the point falls on the vertical axis, then the impedance is equal to either inductive or capacitive reactance. So a plus number, a plus J number is inductive, and a minus J number is capacitive. Yeah, if you ever start studying for the extra exam, you'll, you'll learn this stuff. Um, so if we just talked about X reactance is zero ohms, then it's just pure resistance, and it just falls right along this zero degree line, or the zero line, uh, pure resistance. Now, if we say that x is plus and minus 10, uh, we have, we start at zero, and as we go out, uh, the row increases either plus 10 or minus 10. So the bottom uses the same set of R values, but x is minus 10. And then the last time, we do it with 50. Same set of, you know, when you get down to this point, you're running off the chart, so it kind of stops there. So now, if we say, if we want to re plot reflections, so remember we had this. Now we're, now we're talking about <coughs> reactants. So instead of plotting reflection coefficients along the transmission line, we plot the reflection corresponding to arbitrary values. Uh, different angles is what we're doing. So we wind up with a circle. Zeros on all the perimeters. And then we're going to do... Uh, an arbitrary Z, which means reactance, of 10 ohms. And the impedance is both resistance and reactance, you know, plus and minus 90, so we have that symbol, we have that line. And here's how we got to that. We used an arbitrary impedance reactance. So we said 10 ohms resistance plus J0, which is zero reactance. And then we had J10, J50, J500, and Minus, J, minus J50, so these were inductance, coils, and this was capacitance, reactance. And again, we do the R equal to 50 ohms. And the reason I'm showing that is we're building up this chart, which is what you'll usually see on a Smith chart. You'll see R is 50, R is 10, R is zero, and then you'll see the true resistance at 10, minus 10, and zero. So the labels used indicate which component of the arbitrary reactance values was held constant. <coughs> so if we add some more point and remove the markers, you kind of, and, and you kind of see these, you see, and this is actually a, a standard plot that points are used. That's actually a raw Smith chart with no values on it. 
you place the values at different point based upon your readings. So we've added plots to constant resistive values, and we've added more points and removed individual markers, and we've smoothed the curves. Um, even though this relates to the antenna, it really is used more as a tool for the transmission line. Because your, tra yeah, because your transmission line, I don't want to go into too much, but maybe your transmission line at different points on the line has different values because it's a function of the wavelength of the wire. So basically, this, this is a Smith chart, the raw piece, and you basically plot a lot of those lines. So if we go back to that RG174 example, there's the plot on the Smith chart as opposed to being on just a, a polar chart. And here's what we have. This here what we have earlier. And here's what we have. So polar Cartesian, Cartesian plot. <laughs> same, same thing. And then you have a Smith chart. Where you have the reactance load. I mean, it's it's very complicated. But but basically that's that's really what the Smith chart does. It's a way to show the uh, the, re the reactance of the reactance and resistance in a transmission line. So go back to the Smith chart. That one. So it goes out 50 ohms. Red line goes out to the 50 ohm point. It actually it, it go yeah it goes out. And then uh, it's going it's hard J to J positive. Bring my glasses. Inductance. Yeah, or. it's J point oh, 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 um, and it's 0 0.3 ohms. I don't understand the green line. How can it go back to the negative? Because you're starting from the center. So it's actually, um, what is that? 1.6 and J17. That's actually the generated signal. That's a Z generator. That's 0 0.1, 0.12 away. Yeah. Very technical, but most hands want to read those. So, no. so explain how that, yes, how you actually do that at your house. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm uh, serious. I mean, how, how would I? That good? How, how would you would, do that? How well, would I use it? Or? He's going to kind of show an example of how to do that with his analyzer. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I have one. But but basically, it's it's a calculation. You have to. Um, you can find it out by using a vector analysis device, where you look at your line and it actually tells you what your or any of the antenna analyzers, like the MFJ analyzer, will give you the um, will give you the both the uh, resistance and it'll give you the reactance and it'll tell you whether the reactance is positive or minus. So you have that information. You know how long your line is, and you basically go from there. So you have to kind of change the frequencies and along the frequencies plot different points. If you really want to get into this type of stuff, there's a really good book called Reflections. And there's actually it's on the third version now, Reflections 3. You know, a dummy load is 50 ohms. So a dummy load looks great to your radio, but are you going to get out? <laughs> Probably not. While an antenna that has 1.2 or 1.3, you know, reflection, SWR, you know what? You will get out. And even if, and even if the signal bounces back, it's going to bounce back to the transmitter and it's going to go out again at the speed of light. So, essentially, all that, all that transmission is going to go out through the antenna. I mean, unless you're so mismatched that it it's, doesn't work, pretty much everything will go out. The only, okay. only reason you're worrying about adjusting the SWR is to keep the radio happy. Because tube radios weren't, didn't kick, you know, you tune them, but they didn't really care as much. Ever.